firstly we will create uh, an hd inside spark cluster so for that uh, you have to create a uh, you have to click on create a resource before and then uh, choose the analytics part and now choose hd insight now accordingly you'll have to uh, fill up the names and uh, the details and make sure the names are uh, very unique because otherwise uh, you'll have a deployment error So yeah, make sure you see all the ticks over there. Everything should be verified. Yeah. So now, uh, since we're creating an Spark, a Spark cluster, that's why I choose Spark. And the only operating system available is Linux in this. Choose uh, Spark 2.3.1 to get the latest features. Then select this type of cluster. I think the first part is done now. Okay. Yeah. You have to select a resource group. So basically, all your Uh, virtual machines and resources are a part of this resource group now. So, uh, move on to the second step now. Yeah. So here you're supposed to mention about the Azure uh, storage, and if you don't already have a storage option, then you have to create a new one. And yeah, make sure that this is unique as well. It should be verified before you uh, create the cluster to avoid any errors while creating the cluster. So just wait until it is validated. So it is not validated. There is some error. So make sure that you resolve this error before you press on create. So just root cause. Okay, so there's an issue in the second set. You have to create a new storage account with a. Unique name, so I'm assuming that is unique. We'll know in the final step whether this is, otherwise it won't be validated. So just wait for a while. So yeah, it's validated, and you can see that the location is there, and then. you can see the storage account and you can see the number of nodes the number of head nodes and uh, worker nodes as a uh, spark is just i mean the spark is able to distribute your code accordingly to your code this is the cost now you can create when you're satisfied so the deployment takes around uh, like 10 20 minutes i'll just cut short to the next deployment part when it is accepted you can check your notifications accordingly yeah so our uh, deployment is successful now your hd inside spark cluster is created now you can go on to the spark hd like the name now you can see that there are many features available over your I chose Jupyter Notebook as my coding platform because it's pretty easy. It's already available with you. Uh, if you already have your code in Jupyter Notebook, you can directly uh, copy paste it into this. And of course, use some uh, inbuilt features supplied by Azure. So you'll have to log in and so make sure that while creating the cluster, you remember the credentials. So. Uh, I have implemented in PySpark as I'm comfortable in Python, and since Python 3 is the latest Python version, I'll select a new PySpark 3 file notebook. So PySpark 3 notebook will get created, and so this is a code I already have. So 
I can directly paste it over here and then see how it works on. So here are some demo files and this is Ambari. So Ambari is basically used to manage uh, the resources and metrics of your nodes and hosts and calculate all the metrics which are there, you know, like the uh, load and everything of your code. So since my code is pretty, uh, it's not that extensive, this is not a, this is a personal code as of now, so I'm sure it won't go more than 20% right now while cre the creation it's 11%. So just to check whether the instance is there, Spark instance, you can just run this. Uh, I think I have a slow internet connection, otherwise it won't take a lot of time. So yeah, your application is already starting. Now the information regarding the host will be given the same. Okay, and now as far as the uh, storage is concerned, you'll have to import all your CSV or Excel files, the data set basically. So I've already imported it over here. So first of all, what you have to do is you have to add a directory. My directory's name is data. And uh, you can see a lot of features over here. So add directories first and then you can upload your file. Select it from your computer and directly upload it over here. So Azure storage is like pretty simple. It's just a file, not a blob or anything. It's a file storage, which supports HDFS. So that's a good point for Spark. So here you can download it if uh, you've made changes to it via code. But this is my input file, so I'll have to copy the URL and uh, paste it in my code. So it will refer to this to pick it up in my code and then similarly you'll have to do for your output file as well so it knows where to write then um, yeah so these are pretty like these are some things which will help you out this is magic which is provided by azure for the spark hd inside cluster if you need any help you can just use these So I've already made my code in these two files. As you can see, so this is my main um, function which creates the cluster. And this is just uh, calling that function, the mapping part. So yeah, you remember the storage part, right? So here I've pasted that URL of the input file so that it gets, yeah, we read the CSV file. And uh, the second file which which shows the output there. Yeah, so this is just copy the part directly. So, so this is my function, and uh, I've used a resilient distributed data set. So, here what happens is uh, the Spark itself internally distributes your uh, like the storage the code so here it maps the increments it is mapping the increments of clustering onto different nodes and then combining the data received from each node the computation by each node so this is how it is done so as you can see in the first node there are uh, wait yeah there are 200 nodes then I combine it with the second nodes one. So it's like 200 plus 2 and it's 400. And then for the third one, similarly, it'll be 400 plus 200. So in this code, I have three increments. That's why I have 600 rows in the end, like 200 rows per increment. And this is mapped onto different uh, nodes. So basically, I'll have four, one host and three uh, nodes. So now, uh, Ambari, so you can see that the heap has gone up 18% from 11%. And this is the load, which has slightly increased. Nothing to worry about now, though. And these are the nodes, so uh, yeah. 
There's one horse mood and there are three nodes. And the other ones are, uh, as you can see, the lower three ones are not in use and that is why the disk usage is very less. The, yeah. You can add new host if you want, but uh, if your code handles it accordingly, you won't have to do it manually. Then you can You can check the metrics accordingly. So this way you can uh, distribute your code using Spark's uh, resilient distributed data set very easily and you don't have to, and here using Azure HD inside Spark cluster, you don't have to uh, create your virtual machines on your own. It creates it for you and then you can manage it accordingly. So it's pretty easy.